what percentage of the hike did you or the trek did you actually walk approximately i don't know the percentage i would say a lot of it was definitely done with motorbikes which is almost harder than walking because it's just so painful on your on your rear end and it's always bouncing and you're falling like literally falling off the bike but i would say uh in total i don't think i walked more than uh than 300 kilometers so it was definitely less than 10 i would say maybe maximum 10 percent of the actual the entire journey was done by walking most of it was uh canoes uh shitty bikes most of it and yeah i would say less than 10 percent was actually walking and you took three months almost to do the whole trek yeah. and you had a three-month visa yeah because sometimes like the bike would break down i had to walk like let's say 30 kilometers or 20 kilometers to a village get another bike then the bike would take me a few hundreds then another 20 so yeah, it wasn't that hard in terms of walking, but I actually preferred walking over over bikes because you can really take in the atmosphere. It's not hard on your back at all. It's much slower, but also healthier in a way. You're doing it at your pace. And yeah, I don't know if you went on bikes. I mean, you had your own car in the DRC, but their bikes are not good. Uh, they're overloaded, and then the guy takes you on it, and you give him money, but... You know, I had. I'm. I'm surprised I don't have lower back pain to this day because sometimes you feel like you have permanent nerve da nerve damage. It's really bad, and then it slides in the mud. You fall over. You hurt yourself. You get back on it. Yeah, it's. But walking is great. The butterflies are all around you, and it's it's beautiful. Speak, speaking about uh, nerve permanent damage, you have now the malaria living in your liver right now. And yeah. why didn't you take prophylactics and protection? Um, cause I had gotten it in Sudan in 2019 already. It was my second time getting malaria. I think I had it six times in Africa, right? Yeah. You had it six times. Uh, six yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, and you know that yourself, like Westerners always think of malaria as this deadly disease that's super dangerous. And it is, it is deadly, but in Africa, because they're kind of used to it, uh, when, you know, you learn that you, if you take the treatment pretty soon, when you, when you have the symptoms, usually you'll be fine. Usually. Yeah. Uh, and most of the deaths, I think, are infants and uh, babies as well. So I just thought, you know, I'm going to be there for three months. Do I really want to take the drug for three months? I mean, I was also in Angola and other countries. So do I want to take the drug for six months pre preemptively? Or do I want to take the risk of getting it and then just taking the curative pills? And I prefer taking the curative pills. I'd rather, uh, if I'm going to be there for a very long period of time, like, you know, Angola, Zimbabwe, Zambia, mm -hmm. Kenya... I'd rather just take the cure if I get sick. I feel like it's easier on your liver and your organs than to take a preemptive pill for half a year or even a year. Totally. I understand that. I Did you that. take them? No, I didn't take it. I mean, once I got it, yeah. uh, it's fine. You know, it's, even in the remote villages, they may not be, have electricity. They may not have running yeah. water. They may not have uh, communications, but they'll always have anti-malarial pills, yeah. even in yeah. the, in the villages. True. There'll be a little boutique somewhere that they'll, you'll be able to get those anti-malarial pills in even yeah. the most remote places. It's amazing. For them, it's like the flu almost at this point. It's absolutely, like, yeah. absolutely. It is like the flu completely. Um, yeah, so that's totally true. What about any kind of gastrointestinal problems? I know you had some of them. Oh, yeah, I had so many. I mean, I was. I, it's funny, I had diarrhea for literally almost a year. And Wait, like, hold on. Yeah. What did you, how did you purify water or did you not? You just drank water. From yeah, the that, that's the thing. I thought I'm going to go hardcore and just be a, I mean, look, I, I thought I'm going to get sick from this, but that's fine. I'll cure myself later. I don't want to have, a, because I felt like if I'm going to be with the locals and they're offering me water and I start purifying it in front of them, you know, I figured, look, they're, they're drinking that type of water. I'll just try my best to follow what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'll probably get sick and get a, a bunch of problems for, with my stomach, but I'll fix that later. So, yeah, you're right. They would drink like literal river water. So I'd had my bottle and they would say, okay, we're going to go fill it with water. And they bring you to a stream, but it's not a clean stream. It's it's almost like a swamp. And yeah, of course, I got uh, Giardia, which is a pretty nasty parasite. Uh, and it wrecked havoc on my, uh, on my, on my stomach. I had, uh, at one point I was, yeah, anyways, bowel movement every half an hour sort of thing and just terrible health condition. And I got diagnosed in Iraq. At some point, I was in Iraq, and I thought, this is not normal. Clearly, I'm carrying something. So I just went to the doctor, did some tests, and then they said, yeah, you have uh, Giardia. So it took me a long time to cure it. Now it's totally gone, so I'm happy. I'm back to normal, healthy. But yeah, it was rough on my system, definitely. I would have taken a SteriPen or something along those lines that has UV, and you just have to you know, w you yeah. know stir it around. 
just because i mean i mean you're brave i mean you 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 but you're gonna get sick i mean if you're gonna oh yeah the local i knew that before and i was like the locals i mean they they don't talk too much about it but if you talk to them uh, a lot of locals have diarrhea almost all the time oh yeah oh yeah you know it's just their yeah. natural state of existence. You Absolutely. Know, nobody, nobody has solid poop. They, everybody sh- shits uh, liquid. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's just <laughs> the way it goes. Um, it's so true. Any parting thoughts uh, regarding the DRC journey? I'm, I'll have you back in a future podcast, but I just want sure. to wrap this one up. Um, thoughts on the DRC? Things, surprises, for it's, example. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's it's first of all it's much bigger than people imagine because yes. even yes. once you're the inside size of Western Europe, yes, and then the the speed at which you're going to be traveling is way lower than in Western Europe. So, you know, you could be at a place where sometimes I was on a river there was no other transport than to take uh, man powered canoes, you know, and you're going against the stream. If you're doing 15 kilometers in a day, that's a good day. If you're doing 20, let's say, so calculate that. You know, 20 kilometers in a day. If you got to do 100 kilometers, that's going to take you five days just to get to 100 kilometers. So take a lot of time. If you're going to cross the DRC, that's why I had my three-month visa. And even then, it took me three months to cross. So I was lucky. You want time. If you don't have time, that's when you get stressed. And that's when you have to pay bribes because you want to pass quickly. If you have time on your side, it's easier for you to negotiate. You have more bargaining power. You really need a lot of time to cross. Don't underestimate it. Don't take a one-month visa and think you're going to cross it quickly. It's a recipe Mm -hmm. for disaster. You need either a lot of money. If you're rich, then, of course, you can pay bribes more quickly. But other than that, just take your time. Get a long visa. And by the way, the visa is hard to get. I got mine in Burundi. I speak French, and I got friendly with the ambassador, and I got the visa in Bujumbura, Burundi. But I've heard now that uh, people cannot get it anymore. So it's kind of hit and miss. You have to beg officials in different embassies to get it. Yeah, it's one of the hardest visas to get when you're not in your home country, for sure. And I admire that you were able to get it. That was great. All right. Well, I want to have you back to talk about the DRC on a kind of a future sense. Like, you know, does the country have any hope? Is there you will it finally be able to achieve its incredible potential because it has so much so many resources and it's such a vast place. But that's a whole nother conversation that we'll dive into on a future date. And of course, your upcoming travels. But for now. I encourage everybody to go to uh, the links, follow the links below to go to see your article and uh, learn more about your journey. And um, I really appreciate your time.